In a Lincoln's Day address to a gathering of 10,000 before the memorial to the great emancipator in Washington, President Truman strongly advocates freedom and equality for all United States citizens. Recent events in the United States and abroad have made us realize that it is more important today than ever before to ensure that all Americans enjoy these rights. When I say all Americans, I mean all Americans. Our immediate task is to remove the last remnants of the barriers which stand between millions of our citizens and their birthright. There is no justifiable reason for discrimination because of ancestry, or religion, or race, or color. Three thousand towns and plan enthusiasts prepare for a new assault on the public treasury as they gather on Capitol Hill to do some mass lobbying. The plan, which had its birth during the Depression, would guarantee $100 monthly to every person over 60 to be financed by a 3% income tax. Dr. Townsend, at left, high priest of the plan, is on hand to lead his followers after years of eclipse while the nation was at war. And now the battle is on again. It is carried to the very threshold of Congress where the faithful whoop it up for a tax and spend economy which they think will bring prosperity to America. The French National Assembly wrestles with post-war problems, and the gendarmes wrestle with demonstrating radical members of labor unions. They are violently protesting government attempts to freeze prices and wages and to stabilize French economy. A series of strikes has been the answer of the large communist party. No holes are barred as the police really tangle with a demonstrator who doesn't know when he's licked. Paris, focal point in a Europe torn by conflicting ideologies, is constantly tense and ready for anything. But in the midst of turmoil and tottering governments, there is one spot that never changes. The Seine still has its fishermen, who have only a shrug of the shoulder for the political rioters who delay the rebirth of France. Addressing a meeting in Fennel Hall in Boston, Dr. Carl T. Compton, chairman of President Truman's Commission on Universal Military Training, tells why he believes in a program of preparedness for the United States. Since the United States will not be an aggressor nation, the place and type of war, if we should be engaged in one, will be set by the enemy. This means that any program of military preparedness must be comprehensive, because if there are weak elements in our armor, those will be the points at which a skillful enemy will strike. Only by a system of universal military training in which every young citizen performs this service to his country for preparation to meet its possible needs can we see any possibility for maintaining our armed forces with strength and reserves adequate uh, to face the possibility of war. If we desire to secure peace, it must be known that we are at all times ready for war. It was in line with this principle that Washington advocated, as Mrs. Patton has said, a system for universal military training for our country. It is for the same reason that we advocate it now. And we believe that the argument for it is stronger now than ever before because of the character of modern warfare. And that universal military training will remain a component of any adequate system of military security until such time as the United Nations have established an international police force with adequate powers and without weakening limitations.
rampage if respectability persists, we'll have to buy you a bulletproof girdle. Magnificent. We just have to walk ten minutes in various directions until we find the right institution. What, you've got the nose of a bloodhound. Don't let him worry you. The rest of your face looks fine. <sighs> I wouldn't know anything about Hollis. Your eyes are getting shiny, Miss Page. And your mouth's getting big, Mr. Charles. Where is he? Why don't you ask me if I killed Tommy Drake? You probably had good reason to. How about a story, Dad? Oh, no story for you tonight. You've got to get some sleep. But your story has always put me to sleep. I said I'd take that piece of gold. Oh, it'll leave you that night, brother. Just one word from me and that dog of mine, I'll tear you to pieces. Well, buddy, I guess this is it. Time for that little bombshell. Tell everyone how Tommy Drake was murdered. Tell them why Fran Page was murdered. Tell them about the someone who went to her apartment. That someone is here among us now. I last saw you, I thought of nothing but you. I love you. May I say that? I love you. If I ever marry, it won't be because a bridegroom is a good businessman. Marion, my dear, 
Sometimes you shock me. Of course I do. I'm bold and scheming. Sometimes I think I'm not quite nice. Don't talk of losing your independence. A man in love has no independence worth mentioning. Yes, Marianne, I love you. I have for years. When you came in here and took me in your arms, it was the best moment of my whole life. You know, I've discovered it's possible to be utterly happy and utterly miserable both at once. <laughs> There's no telling at this time. The shock is very critical. How long will it be? Go on in two minutes. I have to go on in two minutes. I need a drink. I have to go on in two minutes. I need a drink. gentlemen and welcome. Once again, it's showtime at the Elbow Room. The management takes great pleasure in presenting to you that charming and gifted personality, Miss Angelica Evans. Honestly, Jolly, I thought you'd never get here. tell you that I need you so 
no need to tell you here. Where? Outside. You're on your own. I thought it was Friday. You told me it would be Friday. The band folded, Angel. I grabbed the first bus out of Scranton. Oh, Ken. Ken, how do you feel? I feel fine. Now. We have so much to talk about. We're going home right this minute. What about your job? You're my job at the moment, darling. but not gaudy. Oh, this is fine. Of course, as soon as they have my tower apartment on Sutton Place ready. You'll have one too, Angel, and I'll get it for you. Well, certainly. You didn't think it was your charm that attracted me. It was your income, silly. Sure. By the way, I uh, owe you for a taxi. We'll talk about that later. First of all, I'd better make some coffee. That's where you're wrong. Because, first of all... When love is young, you must let your heart be strong. Hello, Mike. Come on in. Hello, Angie. I'll be with you in just a minute. Right the other way. He saw his serenade. Hi, Mike. Hello, Ken. What do you think? 
corn. Leave it in. It'll sell. We'll be out of the way here. The place is sort of crowded these days. Ken. Mm. What about the other fellow? Steve? Oh, he's always been with Ken. They started out together in a little place down at Coney Island. And now they've risen to that. Huh? Oh, don't be like that, Michael. Will you hear Ken sing? He's really good. I'm not interested in his singing. I'm only interested in yours, Angie. Why, any other girl would give her eye teeth for the talent that you've got. Don't you realize that? Look, Mike, the trooper's blood in our family ran out when it got to me. I don't believe it. You belong in the profession, Angie, not playing nursemaid to a couple of... I'm pretty disappointed in you. Finding you here under circumstances... Oh, but the circumstances are divine, Michael. And even among the best people, it's customary. Not among your kind, Angie. At least I didn't think so. Of course, I know it's purely selfish, but... Well, I just hate to see a really promising career interfered with, that's all. Mike, girls do get married. <laughs> what did you say? Married, Ken and I. Oh, I'm sorry, I... I'm not just a set of vocal cords, you know. I've got a heart, too. Well, it really is a pity under the circumstances. Oh, but the circumstances are divine, Mike. I want to congratulate you, Ken. Thanks, Mike. I hope you'll both be very happy. Thanks. He was wildly happy about it, would you? What did you tell that joker that you'd been married or buried? Oh, he was Dad's best friend. He's offended because we didn't ask him to the wedding. Nice try, Angel. Let's face it. He thinks you've made a mess of your life and you know it. All right, then he thinks so. Am I supposed to think maybe he's right? Really, Ken, it's my heart, not Mike's or anybody else's. Or am I wrong? It's yours now, isn't it? Hmm? getting ridiculous. Sitting around here kidding ourselves every day is the lucky day. We're going to sell a song. We're going to get a wonderful job singing. I'm going to take Angie on a wonderful honeymoon. Hey, look. All the people that got someplace had a tough time at the beginning. Yeah, but we're overdoing it. Berlin. A singing waiter. Jolson's out of burlesque. Crosby sang in a trio. You know, Sinatra wasn't always Sinatra. If you got it, you'll make it. It's all a matter of talent. Hi, fellas. Hi, Angel. How you doing? Hey, we wrote a wonderful song today. By Tchaikovsky. I'm sorry I couldn't meet you this afternoon, darling, but I had to wait for the doctor so long, I just had time to get to rehearsal. The doctors? What's the matter? Something wrong? Oh, no, he says I'm fine. <laughs> I'm not staging this properly. I should let you catch me whisking a small garment out of sight. And then all of a sudden you'd begin to blush and stammer. You mean you... You mean you and me? I mean, you don't mean... Oh, darling, that's just corny. Angel, that's wonderful. <laughs> I can't believe it. You just have to take the doctor's word for it. But listen, you've got to have everything just right, and that costs a lot of money. Angel, how are we going to do it? We'll do it. We've done all right so far, haven't we? Steve! 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 I'm going to have a baby. I told you you had talent! Ha! <laughs> whoa, 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 what are you doing? Wait a minute. I tell you, Elliot, the boy has real ability. Okay, Mike, I'll give him a chance. Fine. I'll go out this way. It's an interesting voice. I think you'll like it. Oh, uh, don't let him know I had anything to do with it. Huh? Miss Gray, I'll see Mr. Conway now. Mr. Conway, Mr. Elliot. How do you do, sir? Glad to see you. 
And Mr. Nelson. I'm with Mr. Connolly. His accompanist. Miss Gray, set up an audition immediately. This way, please. Got a job. Station WNAT, 15 minutes at 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock? That's a wonderful time. Yeah, I forgot to tell you. 6 o'clock in the morning. Oh, well, that's wonderful, too. Well, it means you can quit working. Oh, Ken, we can't be in a rush about that. We've got to think about the baby. Well, what do you think I'm thinking about? Well, I mean saving. After all, babies are expensive. Now, with both of us working, we can save so much more. Oh, darling, tell me about the job. It sounds wonderful. Wonderful isn't exactly the word. The time now, ten minutes past six o'clock. You've been listening to Ken Conway, the singing cowhand with his friendly guitar. Now, folks, I'll try to entertain you with an old western favorite. Many's the time I sung this in a riding into the sunset. Lonely little ranch house out there Deserted, and it seems so strange. No smoke comes from your chimney, no sign of any pal. Nobody. Tumbleweeds around the door, so empty your corral. No horses. Lonely little ranch house, silent in the breeze. Lonely little dream house filled with memories. Life can be beautiful, can't be denied. You're right, that should be a dotted eight note. It's going to be a beautiful song. It ought to be because it's all about you. <laughs> you know, this is going to sell. Every time I play this phrase, my scalp tingles. You need a shampoo, maestro. I'm so in love. I wouldn't sell it, Ken. Sing it yourself and make it popular. What'd she say? I said Ken ought to sing it himself and make it popular. It's her condition. Mm-hmm. Love can come any time. Come in to my heart. Well, we ought to stop singing those cowboy songs sometime. Honey, that's what we're paid for. But, darling, it isn't you. If you could just be yourself, sing something simple, like, well, like... Like? Guess I always knew... Yeah. ...that life could be beautiful with you. Wait till Angie sees all these. Mr. Conway, she ain't here. She had bad pains a half hour ago. Huh? She went to the hospital. Yes, that's perfectly all right. Oh, Mr. Conway. Oh, you remember Dr. Lorenz. Oh, sure. That's the bar. Oh, excuse me. You are nervous, are you? Oh, no, no, I'm perfectly calm. My friend there was just saying how calm I am. Is she scared? No. Well, uh, do you think I could see her for a minute, Doctor? Yes, I think so. Come with me. minutes. Huh? It's 15 minutes till the broadcast. Yeah. Ride along, ride along, ride along. Ride along on the trail that leads you home. Ride along, ride along. Ken 
Ken Conway, the melancholy cowhand, presents another of his inimitable Western ballads. Go to the piano, Steve. Go ahead, do as I tell you. I'd like to sing a song that Steve Nelson and I wrote. It's for my wife. She's not listening this morning because, well, she's not listening. <laughs> Can be beautiful. How do I know? Somebody beautiful just told me. that? You remember Ken Conway? I thought he sang cowboy songs. So did I. Fifth time you've asked me to listen. I'll bet a stack of chips that you've been losing to me, so I stay and listen to that kid. You're out of your mind. Listen. It can be heavenly. Take nights like this. What makes them heavenly? Only your kiss through all these many Yes, I always knew that life could be beautiful with you. Life can be beautiful. How do I know? Somebody beautiful just told me so. Life can be summertime when it's really fall. Love can come any time, any time at all. Nights can be heaven. Take nights like this What makes them heavenly Only your kiss Through all these many Got some cigars. Yeah. Here, try these. Thanks, Doctor. Ken, I talked to Elliot this morning. Have a cigar. Thanks. Ken, have a cigar, Doctor. Elliot, Elliot. heard you sing. Have a cigar. He, he's going to put you on another program at 6 o'clock. We're already on 6 o'clock. No, 6 o'clock in the evening. As you can see, Ken, the show has jumped from 10th to 7th place. Now, we didn't know how much of that was due to your singing, so we took a special survey. How are we doing? The customers like you. All except here, where the line wiggles. Yeah. That means the customers weren't sure whether they liked you or not. We can give you a sponsor the business now. We can demand a new show entirely built around you. You heard right. Well, I'll keep my fingers crossed. Oh, uh, do you mind if I take a powder? I like to get out the country before my daughter goes to sleep. Sure, run along. Oh, Martha, about the uh, fan mail. Uh, when they ask for Ken's picture, send them a photograph of me. Why scare them to death? I'll take care of it. You're a sweetheart. Good night, you two. Good night. Nice guy. Very nice. Sings, too. Right as 
short for size. How's the baby? Fine. She crawls a lot better. Faster? Fan mail, Angie? Yes. Evening, Mary. She flatly refuses to close her eyes until her old man sings the song. Hi, Angel. Oh, darling, don't pick her up. She'll get excited and then she won't be able to go to sleep. It's the way I affect women. Close your eyes, my little darling. Cause it's time to drift away. To hush a by island. On rock a by bay. By a candy coated mountain. You'll have lots of time to play. On hush a by island. On rock a by bay. You can take the toy town trolley and meet the Jolly Times Express. No one there is melancholy. It's an isle of happiness. Don't you keep your dreamboat waiting? Hope you have a pleasant stay. On Hushabye Island. On Rockabye Bay. She's wonderful, Angie. If it can only stay like this forever. We'll never leave here, will we? Except for that honeymoon we never had. I won't have you cheated out of that. <laughs> This is the best there is. I know it. No, all you fellas have to do is put over the new show. Don't worry, at these prices. Hey, I just thought of something awful. Now we got to worry about income tax. Good. <laughs> I plan to announce the deal at a press reception later this afternoon. Uh, Angie expects me for dinner. Well, have her come into town. You know, it's about time we got a glimpse of that wife of yours. Okay, get her on the phone, will you please, Martha? Mm -hmm. You ought to move into town, Ken. You're good. But being good isn't all there is to it. And don't think the big names are big just because they have ability. They need to have exploitation. You've got to build them up. Now, you'll be interviewed and photographed. You'll make recordings and personal appearances. You ought to be on hand so we can get you any time we want you. Hello, Mrs. Conway. Just a moment, please. Your husband is calling. Wait a minute. Don't tell her what it's all about. Hello, Angel. What are you doing tonight? That's funny. I was just sitting here hoping some nice guy would call me up. Oh, I'd love to, darling. Where? Now, don't ask so many questions. Just be at Fred Elliott's office at 5 o'clock. Will there be a crowd? Uh, there'll be a few people. But I won't know any of them. But... All right, darling. I'll meet you there at 5 o'clock. Goodbye. Finish the baby's formula, Mary? Yes, ma'am. That's good. You know, when I used to sing in nightclubs, I was so blamed scared I had to have two drinks before I'd even go on. What were you scared of, Mrs. Conway?
You'll have to give him up now, Gert. I want him to meet a syndicate. Excuse me. Hello, Angie. Hi, Steve. Ken know you're here? No, he's too involved to notice me. Oh, that's just Martha. That's Elliot's secretary, Fred. Come here, I want you to meet Of course you are, Mrs. Conway. I'm Fred Elliott, Mrs. Conway. It's a very great pleasure to have you here. Thank you very much, Mr. Elliott. Because what's happening to this boy isn't due to me, or even to himself. It's due to you, actually. The rest of us just hopped on your bandwagon, you see. Hello, Angel. I see you already met Fred. Uh, the rest of you can get your noses out of those martinis for a minute. As you all know, this party was to have you meet Ken Conway. Now I'd like to introduce you to the one and only person responsible for his success, his charming and talented wife, Angelica Conway. Yes, yes. Martha, darling, tell me about that heavenly young man. What's his new program to be called? It's called An American Sings. I'm so glad you like him. Well, oh, thanks. Mrs. Conway, but he can't possibly be disturbed right now. Darling, what is this? Why are you so mysterious about where we're going? Well, the show's a big hit, isn't it? We've been married a couple of years. Thought I'd break down and buy my wife a present. How do you like this neighborhood? It's awfully grand. I can't imagine what we're doing here. Slumming. Good afternoon, Mr. Conway. Hello, Benson. This is Mrs. Conway. Well, how do you do, Mr. Conway? Hello. Take care of the car, will you please, Benson? Certainly, sir. Awfully nice to meet you, Mrs. Conway. Awfully nice to meet you, Jimmy. Good afternoon, madam. Good afternoon, Edwards. Now look, a joke's a joke. Remember the tower apartment on Sutton Place you always wanted? Ken? <laughs> Come on, now wait a minute. You haven't seen the joint yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. Come on. Close your eyes. Open. Oh, Ken. It's enchanting. Here. What a wonderful idea. How did you find the time? Well, Martha helped me. Martha? Yeah, she's terrific. I don't see how she did all this in just a month. <laughs> no, truly, Miss Gray, I couldn't be more delighted with it. Well, that's quite a relief, Mrs. Conway. Ken was so anxious for you to like it. As Ken says, you're magic. You really are, aren't you? People are arriving in droves. Well, then I'd At this point, I feel almost ready to cope with them.
Oh, Michael, if you knew what it is to see a familiar face. Didn't you know I was invited? I didn't know anybody was invited till just a few hours ago. Ken thinks it's a good way to break in our new home. Oh, Martha, would you? Something tells me I'm going to get awfully high tonight, Michael. Stand by for me, will you? Why bother? Why not just take it easy? These things run themselves, Angie. <laughs> oh, no, they don't. They're run very carefully indeed by the people who know how. Charmed. Hello. Hello. All right, Michael. All your friends are here. You know what a stone fence is? You mean a stone wall? I mean a stone fence, brother. It's sort of like an ice cream soda with conviction. Bartender, would you please give me a cocktail shaker with some shaved ice and some brandy and some absinthe and some Cointreau? Yes, ma'am. This is something special. Insidious, isn't it, Angie? What, Mike? All this leisure. So much of it makes you realize what work really meant. Isn't that so? You mean I could miss singing my lungs out in those gin mills? That's the silliest thing I've ever heard. What you need, Mike, is a stone fence. Just about the most colossal drink you'd ever drunk. Drank. It, it puts poise in apathetic people, if you know what I mean. And after the second one, your spine turns to solid platinum. You take one part brandy. And two parts rye. I'll have another drink. I won't get frightened, or sure. Oh, she's a nice little thing, really. But you know radio, full of big stars like Ken and the women they happened to marry before they were successful. If you'd like to see my baby. You think you can hold him just because you have a baby? Oh, Ken, I'm trying so hard. If I could just get some self-confidence. Yes, another drink. Just one more. Insidious, isn't it, Angie? You know, maybe I could work again. If I could take up my I want my wife to have every good thing that there is. It's a sin, darling. Of course, there's no sense in it when you can give me everything. But I'm afraid, Ken. I'm afraid. Ken! Ken! Help me! Help me! Ken! Angel! What's the matter? Oh. Darling, hold me. Oh. Darling, you just had a bad dream. I'm right here with you. Maybe if you had a few less when you drink. I'd have nightmares, too, if I drank as much as you do. I don't know what happened to me. I begin to feel so in inadequate somehow. And I need courage, and it gives it to me. But that's so foolish. No. But, darling, if I could feel it was still us, you and me together, that you need me the way you did when you were first starting. If we could go away for a little while, a weekend even. We will, darling. Any weekend, you say? This Friday, then. Just you and me and the baby. Anywhere, I don't care. You bet we will. Well, this Friday, I've got this benefit. Martha's got a million things lined up for me to do. Then how about next weekend? Well, next week? We will, darling. Just as soon as possible. since we wrote a tune together? I have no idea. Three months. Why don't you get some time so we can beat something out? 
For that matter, why she gets up the time, period. I wonder what's keeping Angel. Double feature, probably. That's where she spends most of her days. Not anymore. I know Martha called to remind her that Fred's party was tonight. Well, she'd hardly miss a treat like that. A chance to spend a whole evening with you and 50 other people. Song with some heart in it, that's what we ought to do. Like the one you wrote for Angie when she was going to have the baby. Cut it out, Steve. What's the matter? Well, that song just makes me realize how different everything is. Isn't that good? I'd say everything's great. Your new radio show is the best thing on the air. Yeah, everything's just great. Tell Angel I'm dressing, will you? Hello. Hi, Stevie. Where's the boy? He's changing. You're going to Elliot's party tonight, remember? Oh, murder. Well, in that case, I'd better have a little drink. Make me something, will you? Did you run out of double features? Ah, Steve, you look as low as I felt when I got up this morning. Come on, we'll both have one. An old-fashioned, only no sugar, no vegetables, and go light on the ice. Why corrupt good liquor? Hey, do you know what I did? What? I bought myself a hat. Yeah? Want to see it? Mm-hmm. What time does it light up? Oh, you rat. Well, that's a little different from what you usually wear. That's just what I mean, a new personality. Any change would be for the better. Hello, Angel. You better get dressed. There's nothing like a warm welcome. Oh, well, honey, it's late. Look, Manusha Poe, do you like it? Confidentially. Oh, Ken. I guess you're right. I guess I knew it was terrible. I'll take it back tomorrow. Hey, Steve, what are you up to? I don't want that thing. You twisted my arm. Angie, have you forgotten that Fred expects us tonight for dinner? I'll be all right, darling. I'll be dressed before you are. Steve, have you noticed how stuffy my husband's been getting lately about drinking? Uh, I'll see you later at Fred's. Oh, I'll wait till we're ready to go. And you could fix me another old-fashioned while we're dressing. so awful from last night, I thought this might help. I'd hope by this time that... What, Steve? That you'd found out that it won't. Did you ever sit day after day, night after night, staring at your hands? I have. So you take a little drink. You know, there's something creative about pouring a drink. There's something warm and friendly about it. Do I sound like a straight-checkered case? No, just a borderline. Angie. Hello, darling. You didn't tell her, did you? Remember that honeymoon we never got? Oh, that one. 
We're leaving on it this afternoon. What do you think of that? Darling. Of course, he's expected to make a couple of personal appearances while he's there. And break in the new show in Chicago. But we'll get away from him, don't worry. Think you can have us packed by five? Mister, I'd like to see anybody try and stop me. Steve, will Ken need his tail, do you think? You better pack him. I haven't seen him for hours. Where is he? He's getting the dope on our welcome into Chicago. Parade through the loop, tour the stockyards. <laughs> Charming. I'll just skip that one, unless Ken needs me. No, he won't need you. Martha will be there to take care of everything. Martha? Are you serious, Steve? Yeah, she'll do the hack work. Ken couldn't get along without her. Whereas me, I'm just sort of an afterthought, is that it? I wonder if Ken consulted her about taking me. Angie. Martha thought it'd be a swell idea. Oh, that's just fine. Just fine. I think I left my cigarettes in the bar. Everything all set? I don't know how it happened. Oh, well, what happened? What's the matter? The stuff is packed, but Angie's drunk. Where is she? Ken. She never sees you. She thinks all these dames making a play for you means something to you. She's afraid of losing you. She's all mixed up. Oh, gee, I... What's the matter, Ken? Is my... my head on crooked or something? What's the matter, Ken? Aren't you ready? Are you, Angel? Well, certainly. Certainly, I'm ready. As soon as I get my dress on... If we could just wait till tomorrow. I can't wait till tomorrow. We've got to give a show. Oh, a show. My goodness, Ken, it seems you always have to give a show. The way that show must go on and on and on. I'm going to have to leave without you, Angie. But suppose you don't want the show to go on. How are you going to stop it? Hmm? Goodbye, Angel. Suppose it just keeps rolling along. Then you wish there wasn't any show at all. Sure. It was taken away. Kirk. Hello, Mr. Conway. Come in and see the band. Oh, there's my girl. Doesn't that look like fun? Oh, Be careful. Day. She'll get oil all over you, Mr. Conway. I don't mind. Hi. Oh, Miss Kirk. Miss mm. Conway doesn't feel very well. <coughs> Maybe you better not take the baby in to see her until in the morning. I understand, sir. You behave yourself. Mm. Goodbye. Mrs. Conway. Mrs. Conway. I'm sorry to disturb you so early, but the baron has a little fever. I've sent for Dr. Lorenz. Oh, it's not serious. Just a little over a hundred. I'll be right there. He 
It seems to be a throat infection. Keep her on a liquid diet and uh, watch her closely. Yes, Doctor. No better. It's time to drift away. <coughs> you hush the bar island. Oh, rock a bye bay. <coughs> by a candy haunted <coughs> mountain. You'll have lots of time to play. Her temperature is 103, and she has difficulty with her breathing. As quick as you can, please, doctor. It'll be better soon. Mommy's right here with you. There's nothing to be afraid of. that you get a good night's sleep. I've discovered I don't need any sleep. Really? That's a remarkable discovery. I have Chicago on the phone, Mrs. Conway. Oh, yes, Edwards. I'll take it right here. My husband. I've been trying to reach him. He knows about the baby, of course. Not till now. His new show means so much to him. I hate it, too. Hello. Yes, this is Mrs. Conway. Hello, Ken. <laughs> Be quiet, will you please? Be quiet back there, all of you, will you? Hello? Oh, hello, Angel. Talk louder, will you please? Ken, can't you hear me? I'm trying to tell you about the baby. I, I, I can't hear you, Angel. No, it, it's nothing, darling. I just thought I'd call you. Yes, it, it sounds like a wonderful party. Goodbye, dear. Thank you, Edwards. I'll just have some more coffee. You know the way you have been driving yourself, Mrs. Conway? I'd even recommend a drink. You would? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. And when did you eat last? I haven't kept track. Then eat a sandwich. Doctor's orders. She's got to get better soon, Doctor. She can't go on this way. We can't tell when the crisis will come. You still haven't told your husband? You think that's wrong? I'm puzzled. I can't judge. I'll tell him when it's over. When... Doctor. She's much better.
Operator, I want the Windsor Hotel in Chicago. I'll wait. I'd like to speak to Ken Conway, please. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm trying to reach Mr. Conway. This is Mr. Conway's room. It is? Well, could I... Could I speak to him, please? Oh, it's you, Mrs. Conway. Certainly, just a moment, please. Ken, it's your wife calling from New York. Hello, Angel. Oh, that's all right. We've been here all night working on the show. Well, I thought I should tell you, Ken. The baby's been sick. Angie, why haven't you told me sooner? Well, I did call you once, but... I don't know. I thought you'd worry. I know how much this new show means to you. Angel, are you crying? I'm just tired, that's all. No, there's no reason for you to come back. There's no reason at all. Hello? Hello, Angel. Hello? Oh, Mr. Conway. Hello, Miss Kirk. How's the baby? I recognize you from your pictures. Angel's doing very well, Mr. Conway. There's nothing at all to worry about now. Isn't it extraordinary how quickly they recover? <laughs> and I can certainly see where she got that robust little constitution now that I've met you. I was asking Mrs. Conway the other day. Where is she? Why, in her room, I imagine. Excuse me. Chicago. Aren't you supposed to... Just the way I left you. Now, please. I've got to go back in an hour. You better try to sleep this off unless you want that nurse to. Well, what difference does it make? She'd be used to it by now, wouldn't she? Keep her away from the stuff if she's determined to get at it. You could have, once, before she ever got to this stage. Well, look who's here. Where are you going? The park. The park? Oh, that's fine. Have fun. Be a good girl. All right, Miss Kirk. Come on, dear. Bye, Angel. Goodbye, Daddy. She's a lovely child. Well brought up. You know, Conway, with all the best intentions in the world, men like you make their wives idle, useless. You give them servants to clean their houses, nurses to take care of their children. And then you say to them, now you have everything you want. Sit there and enjoy it. Well, naturally, I've tried to give my wife everything she wants. Certainly you have. But in doing so, you have taken all responsibility away from her left her life with no values. In despair, feeling she has lost you to your career in exchange for nothing she desired, your wife turned to this. Well, what can I do, Doc? Your wife is the victim of a disease, and there's only one cure. That is to give up liquor entirely. They're like diabetics, who have to reject sugar and take the insulin. Alcoholics must give up alcohol. Live without it. Well, will you tell her that, Doctor? 
Do you think you can make her realize that? I'll speak to her, but she may not be ready yet. She'll never be ready until she faces her illness and she herself wants to change. Good afternoon, Doctor. Good afternoon, Mrs. Conway. Pardon me for interrupting. Ken, Elliot's office just called, says you're late. They're waiting for you. Oh, I better get down there. Bye, Angel. Bye, Doctor. Uh, goodbye, Conway. Mm. This coffee looks absolutely foul. Wouldn't you rather have a drink? At two o'clock in the afternoon. Well, I just thought if, if you were tired. There are people, you know, who even drink in the morning. Are there? Now, why do you tell me that, I wonder? It occurred to me. No, Ken put you up to it, didn't he? He told you all about me. Your husband's extremely disturbed about you. So I take a drink once in a while. What of it? Does that make me a... a lush or something? There are a lot of people who drink to excess. They are not, uh, they are just sick. He had no right to tell you. He had every right, because he loves you. But only you can help yourself in the final analysis, Mrs. Conway. By facing what's happened and uh, resolving to conquer it. You're just as sanctimonious as he is. It's my business what I do. I don't hurt anybody but myself. How about your husband and your child? And I thought you were my friend. If you don't mind, Dr. Lorenz, will you please Excuse me. talk to you. No, no. Hello, Angie. You know something, Steve? I read someplace from the Chinese or the Egyptians or somebody. So these are the three worst things. To lie in bed and sleep not. To wait for one who comes not. To try to please and please not. They all fit me, don't they? Why don't you give Angie a chance? It's hopeless, Steve. She wouldn't even listen to Dr. Lorenz. So help me, Ken. Dumb as I am, I can handle her better than you do. Why don't you make her think she's a help to you, like she was at the beginning? Let her do something on her own. Throw a shindig, maybe, with her running everything, not Martha. It's wonderful to see you, Rita. I wouldn't have missed this for anything in the world. You too. It's nice seeing you again, Angie. Thank you. Angel, I'm so proud of you. You really look beautiful tonight. Don't be silly, darling. It's this emerald. It's so big. What is it, Ken? Nothing. Uh, I mean, uh, I didn't know you invited Martha. Yes. Why shouldn't I? How are you, Martha? I'm so glad you could come. Angie, you look too lovely for words. Thank you. Let's have a drink, shall we? Love to. Hi, Ken. Hi, Martha. 
Martha, you went with them for that coast broadcast, didn't you? Of course. I wouldn't have missed that for anything. Hello, Jane. Hello, Martha. You must really love your work. I mean, it couldn't have been much fun, could it? Oh, we found time for it here and there. And Ken's so wonderful to work with. Is he? An old-fashioned piece. Make mine a mild one, bartender. Angie, that's the most attractive pendant I have ever seen. Thank you. It's a present from Ken. Yes, I know. Exquisite. You knew, Martha? Of course. I write all Ken's checks, you know. It's in such perfect taste. I rather thought you had something to do with it. I consider that an extremely nice compliment, Angie. Well, did you? I happened to mention that I'd always wanted an emerald pendant. And did you happen to be with Ken when he bought it? Really, darling, you're making me feel on trial or something. Do I, darling? I didn't think you could feel anything so human. Your health, Martha. Thank you. I think I see some friends. Would you excuse me, please, Angie? Steve, was the trip to California fun? Not for me. It's too much work. How about Ken and Martha? They seemed to enjoy themselves, didn't they? Angie, don't. You're imagining things. I seem to have a talent for it, Steve. After all, you were Ken's friend first. Naturally, you'd be loyal to him. It's not a question of loyalty, Angie. Michael! Hiya, Michael. Hello, Angie. Oh, do I want to talk to you. Let's go have a little... Uh-oh. Here's to us, Michael. Listen, Mike. Listen, I know what's wrong with me. What is it, Angie? Oh, it's my self-respect, that's what. I've lost my self-respect. Will you be my agent again? Of course I will, Angie, but because just Because I'm now... going to get a job singing. I'm going to make this town sit up and take notice of Angie Evans. I'm going to sing... Listen, Angie. Ken's singing. Oh, no. No, Mike, he shouldn't sing that song. Nights can be heavenly, take nights like this, what makes them heavenly, only your kiss through all these many years, guess I always nice yourself, Angie. 
Oh, I'd love to see you all messed up. I can't think of anything that would give me a bigger kick. I'll bet you'll like this when you get up in the morning even, aren't you, Martha? Or should I ask my husband? Steady, Angie. Everything in this house belongs to you, doesn't it? You picked it all out. Even this pendant. Well, I don't want it. Take it! remember clearly. But I was a lovely hostess, wasn't I? You were practically Emily Post. Ken, you've got to help me. No. Don't turn on the light. It's easier to talk to you in the dark. What makes me do it? Liquor. Other people drink. Not the way you do. Why? What's wrong with me? I don't know. You've got everything in the world that you want. You should have seen yourself. You were like a crazy woman. Kim, help me. For the baby. You don't care about me, but you're crazy about the baby. Don't talk that way. I know how you feel. But the baby's mine as well as yours. You can't shut me out. Nobody's trying to shut you out. But there's a limit to everything. What are you trying to say? It's obvious, isn't it? Limit to everything. What are you trying to say, Ken? It's going to be the end of our marriage if you go on this way. I've had about enough. Don't you realize that? You've had enough. You're still half drunk, aren't you? Then why don't you get out? Why just keep whining around about how you've had enough? I've had enough too! Get out and let me alone! Is that what you want? Listen to you. You can't even say it yourself. You make me say it. A divorce! A divorce! I'm not afraid to say it. Okay, Angie.
gone, Mrs. Conway. last night, Steve. It's all a blank. Except that I know we had some kind of a row. And he packed all his things and told Edwards he was going to send for them. Yeah, but you've had arguments before. Ken wouldn't do a thing like that. Hey, look. Look, I'll, I'll go talk to him myself. I'll bring him home to you personally. Now leave it to me, will you? And don't worry. What are you trying to prove by this? I'm fed up. I'm through, Steve. Feeling kind of sorry for yourself, aren't you? It's not your fault you're too busy being a hotshot to save your marriage. Look, Ken, she's helpless. The doc told you she's a victim of a disease. What will anything else you've got mean without Angie? Nothing very much. I know I owe her everything. She can have all the money she wants, she can have the apartment. But I told the lawyer that I want the baby, for obvious reasons. Swell. She's gonna like that fine, isn't she? Why give her anything at all? Why don't you just throw her out and be done with it? You better go, Steve. I'm going. I hope you'll be very happy with your fan mail. Ken just won't listen to reason, Angie. But perhaps after he's had a chance to think things over... It's finished, Steve. I've lost him. The lawyer made that clear on the phone. I told him I wanted my baby, and he said a child wasn't safe with me. Said they'd come into court and prove I'm nothing... Ken but wouldn't let him do that, Angie. We both know better than that, don't we? Steve, I've got to get out of here. I can't stand this place. Let Martha have it. Let her have Ken, too. My baby's all right with Miss Kirk. But I can't stay here. Steve, you've got to get me out of here. Looks OK, huh? Yes. No feminine touches smearing it up. Well, uh, how about having a little dinner with me, huh? You know you're a swell guy, Steve, but you want to keep tabs on me. I want to be alone. Yeah. Well, Angie, you will take care of yourself, won't you? Mm -hmm. I talk to you in the morning. Sure. Night. Room service, please. Without you to hold me, it doesn't seem right.
put you on the dinner show, Mrs. Conway. Thank you, Mr. Winsley. We have a special kind of clientele here, you know. Not one of those bang-bang places. Well, she's scarcely a bang-bang personality, Sam. I know the crowd, Mr. Winsley. You're absolutely right. I'll send you over a contract this afternoon. Mike, how do you do it? It's easy. Everybody remembers you. No, they don't. All they know is that I'm Mrs. Ken Conway. But it's my own name I'm going to use. I want that understood. Angelica Evans. Yes, yes. I'll go and talk to him about it right now. Don't you worry. <sighs> Calm yourself, Steve. I'll stay sober. I'm calm as a clam. <laughs> You don't have to worry about me, Steve. I want my baby, and I'm going to prove I can take care of her. I know you will, Angie. You're protecting me, aren't you? Now, don't be so suspicious. My hero. Never struck my mother in my life. At least not where to show. But Angie doesn't have to work in clubs. She can have all the money she wants. She knows that, Ken. But she's trying to prove to you that she can stand on her own feet now, in the hope that you might let the baby... The baby stays with me once and for all, and you better tell her that. I see. Hello. Hello, Martha. Am I early? No, uh, just in time. Painting the town tonight? No, we're just dining here. Now, that's what I call an enterprising dress, Martha. Enterprising? Smooth. You look sweet yourself, Steve. I was trying to think of the right word for it. Smooth, definitely. Should I go out and come in again? Oh, don't mind, Steve. He'll get over it. There's nothing like the light touch, is there? Do you know what Angie's doing right now? She's locked herself alone in a hotel room, fighting for her life. Stupid dame, isn't she? We know she just hasn't got a chance. I hope you have a swell time. Steve! I'd like to tell you something. Skip it. You don't fool me for a minute. Well, I don't fool myself either. Give me credit for that at least. Curiously enough, I'm human, Steve. You amaze me. And naive. Do you know, for example, what it meant to me coming here to dinner tonight? It's all I've thought about all day. It's true, you see. I am in love with Ken. I have been from the very beginning. But where does it get me, Steve? I run errands, I get kicked around, and I never stop being efficient. While we were on tour, you and a lot of people were suspicious of us, weren't you? Maybe. You were. I wanted you to be. That impression is all I've ever had. Idiotic, isn't it? How people in love react. Take Ken now. He wants to hurt Angie. He doesn't want her to work. He wants her completely dependent on him because he loves her. and It's all gone to pieces. So none of us get what we want. Me, I'm a character who's just humble enough to take what I can get. So I'll hang around and be a pal because that's all there is for me. You still think I'm smooth, Steve? I'm sorry, Martha. Good night, you two. Uh, Martha. Don't worry about what to say, Ken. I uh, just remembered an appointment with a headache. See you tomorrow, Ken. Hello, Miss Kirk. How are you? How's the baby? The baby's fine, Mrs. Conway. Oh, she talks about you a lot. Of course. I'm afraid we won't be here, Mrs. Conway. I don't know exactly. I, uh... I understand. Mr. Conway has given orders that I... I'm not to see Angel. He even had the lock on the front door changed so your key won't fit. I see.
been waiting a long time. <laughs> Set him up, Johnny. Set him up for everybody on the new father. <laughs> have a cigar. Oh, excuse me. Sure. Well, would you have a drink with us? We're, we're celebrating. No, thanks. Well, I wish you would. <laughs> Sorry. Street bourbon, please. Make it a double. You bet. Uh, Mr. Gordon there, his wife, just presented him with a seven-pound baby girl. Now, no fool of you guys. You've never seen a baby like mine. You just don't know what it means for two people to know that they have a wonderful little kid to live for. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, the Raven Club brings you that touching ballad made popular by Ken Conway. Take my baby away from me. I'm going to get my baby back.
Joe and me put you to bed. Joe? Her husband. He was laying out in the front steps. Joe come home from the night shift. We brought you up here. Why? Nothing new to me. Had a sister like that. Got with that cigarette. You nearly burned up the bed last night. Want a little nip? Knew you would. Sister always did. School next door. It's recess time. Could I have another? Help yourself. This minute, darling, but as soon as you finish your dinner. Here we are. Cassie, your big bed, Mommy? Of course you can sleep in Mommy's big bed. Let's have a bit of cream on here. Yeah. Oh, Mommy forgot the sugar. Officer. I told them I saw Mrs. Conway drive away with a bairn. You told the police about it? I was so frightened, sir. It looked like Mrs. Conway had been drinking. Call the police, Steve. Tell them the baby's here at home with us, that everything's all right. We'll find him ourselves. But if Angie's been drinking, Ken, the baby's not safe with her. In her condition, Mr. Conway, there's no telling what she might do with a bairn. The baby's safe with her, no matter what condition she's in. Call the police before the papers get hold of her. Tell them, to, uh, tell them the whole thing was a mistake. You're so sleepy, you can't keep your eyes open. You can't keep your eyes open. You're right, darling, all the time. Good night, my angel. Good night, Sonny. Yes, darling. Sing my song. <laughs> 
Cause it's time to drift away to Hushabai Island on Rockabye Bay. You can take the toy town trolley and meet the jolly times express. No one there is melancholy. It's an isle of happiness. Don't you keep your dreamboat waiting. Hope you have a pleasant day. On Hushabai Island. Baby, my baby, my baby, my baby. 
Please, Doctor. Couldn't you see the baby? It might help. Bring in the child, nurse. The baby's safe, Angel. She's safe. She's all right. Her whole world was built around you. And she thought she had lost you. I understand that now. If you do, and if you accept that it was partly your fault, it'll help you both. I do accept it. I didn't understand when she called for help. I failed her. That's true, in a sense. But at the same time, she didn't understand the truth of her exclusion from your life. She thought she had lost you to Martha. But that was never true. I know. So does she. She made it up to justify her drinking. You see, she couldn't see the reality of a break between you. And in her private world, to which she retreated with a bottle. Well, there she could imagine and justify everything. She won't have to imagine anything from now on. I'm going to see to that. You sure you're not tired, darling? Of course not. It's such fun sitting up at last. There's nothing to worry about now. Eventually, there won't be even any scars. Ken, I want to tell you something. It had to happen the way it did. I needed to hit rock bottom before I could change. Now I... I'm never going to be afraid again. We're going to have a wonderful life together, darling. And darling, it's wonderful to rise each day and fear not. To sleep each night and dream not. And to give one's heart and doubt not. <laughs>